Hey YouTube people, wanted to take a look at the ASUS VivoTab Note 8 running Windows 10. Uh, now to get Windows 10 on here, what I had to do was just use a OTG cable with a USB hub and hook up a keyboard and mouse and also a Windows 10 thumb drive. Uh, once you've done that, uh, one of the key things that you have to do is uh, set up in the BIOS. Uh, there is a USB option in the USB settings that uh, talks about uh, USB mode and I think it's XHCI or EHCI. If you set that to EHCI it will actually detect uh, UEFI compatible uh, thumb drives. So if you make that change to the setting and also disable secure boot you should be set to load Windows 10 up on your VivoTab device. Just hit uh, the delete button on the keyboard that you've hooked up to the tablet as it reboots, which will get you into the BIOS, and then if you go to the boot setting, you can boot for right from uh, thumb drive, and that will lead you into the Windows 10 setup. So uh, I finished that. Um, the touch, the one thing to keep in mind is the touch screen will not work in Windows 10 until you get the drivers installed. So I just grabbed all the stock drivers from Asus right off the bat and was able to get things rolling. But until I had, was to that point, I had to leave the keyboard and mouse plugged in. Uh, so be sure you've got your Vivo tab charged up um, and you can play with the keyboard and mouse for quite a while until you can boot into Windows and uh, get going. So let's take a quick look. I loaded uh, Windows 10 up on this device um, with one of the previous builds. Uh, I'm now running build 9926 and it's actually pretty usable uh, as a as a tablet device. Uh, the previous build of Windows 10 you know, it had basically no tablet functionality whatsoever, and it uh, wasn't the best experience. Now, the tablet experience on Windows 10 right now in this build is still lacking. Uh, it's a little bit better, um, but we'll run through it, and I'll show you some of the issues that I had. So, first of all, touch works great, um, but if you now open up uh, any sort of Windows application that used to be kind of like a full screen thing. Uh, it still appears in Windows mode. You still have the taskbar on the bottom and um, you can change that by hitting this full screen button and that kind of does the trick. But notice that I put my th finger up into this um, search bar and the cursor is blinking but it didn't bring up the on-screen keyboard. So uh, the reason that it didn't do that is because despite having uh, made it full screen, I'm still not in what they call tablet mode. So if you swipe from the side, there's no longer the charms bar, but you can click tablet mode and enable it. And now when you're in here and you click on something, it will actually bring up the on-screen keyboard, which is what you want for this type of tablet device so you can you know start typing uh, whatever so um, the other thing is the swipe to pull down does not seem to work and the other thing that that has not been working for me is see how I'm trying to click that red X it just doesn't want to do it and I'm not sure what that is because um, it has worked and it hasn't worked at different times. And you can swipe up from the bottom to get the taskbar, but it it just won't let me touch that. And if I disable tablet mode, I still can't get it. So the workaround is to play with things or swipe in from the, from the side, which it's not even doing right now anymore. So kind of funky you'll run into some interface problems. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of some of these. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm sure there's maybe some rhyme and reason to how it's working, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. This is obviously a technical preview. It's not 
you know, r quite ready yet, uh, but it's getting there. So let's go ahead and look at Office, the new Office on here. Uh, we've got the Word Preview app, which looks a lot like Office 2013 on a desktop. And you can click in and you can start typing away if you want uh, on a tablet device. It's got big buttons that you can hit. Um, so that's kind of a, a fun thing you get to do if you're running Windows 10 is you can play with this new office completely free. Um, and it does some pretty cool things. So I'm going to come over here and let's look at some little tips and tricks for using this device. For one, you come in from the right and you're like, oh, I want to, I want to adjust the brightness. How do I do that? So we click display and you have an option here that says adjust my screen brightness automatically. Okay, well, that I can turn that on or off. How do I adjust my screen brightness? The easiest way, because you can't swipe in and use the charms bar anymore, I used to swipe in from the right and go to settings and adjust my my brightness. But there's a little battery icon in the taskbar. If you tap that, there's an adjust screen brightness right there. So you can tap that and do it that way. So just about as quick as before. doesn't look quite as good. I'm sure that will change. They'll probably add something in to the notifications bar. But you may also be asking, uh, you know, I'm using uh, my Windows app and I'm in full screen mode and I used to get a bunch of settings here for my calendar app and they're gone. The notifications is there. How do I get it? So uh, the trick is you swipe down from the top and if you look in this top left hand side you've got that little button right there so you can come in here and you can search and get your settings as well which now brings up exactly what you may have been looking for uh, so it's a little bit different uh, than the charms bar but it works and it's be you know it's pretty standardized across to all of these apps as far as I can tell you also have the, these uh, three dots down in the bottom, which are usable uh, to get the swipe up. Because the swipe up and swipe down, it does not work the same as it did in Windows 8, as you can see. Swipe down and it does basically pulls in the taskbar, or sorry, the, the window bar. And swiping up pulls in the taskbar when something's full screen, but that's about it. So that lets you, you know, get back to the supposedly get back to the windows button but it's obviously not working so um when you get in a situation like this you're kind of trapped in things if you swipe in from the left you can uh get to the desktops and you can close it that way that's what i've been doing when i get stuck inside an application which i don't i i swear it wasn't doing that until i installed the wacom drivers um so let's take a look at the Wacom. I, you know, I can't confirm that for sure because I, I, I can't remember exactly if it was after I installed the Wacom drivers that it started doing that. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a peek at how well the Wacom drivers are working under Windows 10. Uh, from what I can tell, you know, in terms of pressure sensitivity, uh, soft and then hard you know, there's there's the pressure difference that's happening um, in OneNote. Yeah, I know I am not a huge, uh, you know, I like having a pen. I use it quite a bit for taking notes, but I'm not an artist or anything. I can't go into a lot of depth on pressure levels other than I can see that they are registering. So uh, you would have to look into that for your particular application. So, um Let's talk briefly about Windows 10 changes. Um, there is the slide in notification. That's a big thing. You can hit this expand button and it brings up rotation lock, uh, location, uh, VPN, your tablet mode, all sorts of settings in here. Uh, kind of bare bones. You also get notifications when you get uh, 
basically I've seen lots of things show up here. Windows updates, uh, I'm sure calendar items might show up in there, warnings about virus, um, scans and things like that show up in there. And I'm sure they'll be expanding a lot of that. Uh, let's take a look at, well, let me tell you what I did to get this installed and what I usually do. Um, the nice thing about doing a fresh install is that you have quite a bit of space available and we've wiped out the recovery partitions. Be sure to make a backup of your your tablet um, before you go to do this. Um, but Windows 10 appears to be quite, pretty lightweight. Uh, it's only using 12 gigabytes uh, with this fresh install, which is pretty reasonable, um, which is good because uh, Microsoft keeps pushing these 32 gigabyte devices, especially, I mean, this the next generation uh, yoga tablets, I mean, they're all 32 gigabytes and you can't get anything higher. And I don't know how they expect anyone to install any software on their little Windows tablets, the 8-inch ones and even some of the 10 inch ones. Uh, so anyways, that's another topic. Um, but uh, one thing I like to do, and you don't have to do this, is disable any BitLocker, any uh, file encryption on the device that will speed up the little SSD on this device. Um, turn off real-time virus scanning uh, for Windows Defender. Um, and <laughs> I know security experts would disagree with me, but uh, if you are you know, if you know what you're doing in terms of you visit websites regularly that you trust and aren't browsing and clicking all kinds of weird things, if you don't trust your, yourself and the and the the websites you're visiting, um, you know, maybe leave that real time protection on. But it does make a huge difference in the performance and responsiveness of these devices because they are so underpowered. Um, so anyways, that's kind of an aside and not directly related to Windows 10, but uh, there you have it. So Windows 10, it's working pretty decently. Oh, one last tip for you. If you uh, install Google Chrome, uh, and I wouldn't normally, you know, I, I love Chrome on desktop, but on tablets, the Metro IE has been so much better. Uh, in terms of touch responsiveness, but guess what? Windows 10 does not have Internet Explorer with the modern UI. It is all straight up Internet Explorer desktop style, um, and I haven't even seen the touch gestures even work. So if you, <laughs> you may as well be using Chrome at that point. So that's what I tried to do. Um, and what I found was, what was happening is I would click up here, and try to start typing in a URL. And as I would type, it wouldn't register. Okay, there you go. Now you can see, I guess it was still open in the background. So I'm trying to type and nothing's happening. It just will not register. It's registering now, but it only because I made a change uh, to one of the Chrome advanced settings. So if you try to use Chrome on Windows 10 on your tablet and it is not um, registering what you're typing, what you need to do is type in Chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags. So you can see that there. and you want to scroll down and you may be asking how am I supposed to type in Chrome colon colon plug or er, flags if I can't even type well that's a good question so what you have to do is come over to Internet Explorer and in Internet Explorer type Chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags and then you want to select all you want to copy and then you want to slide in from the right go back to Chrome 
and I already have this open apparently, and paste it in there, and then you can hit enter, and that will get you back to this page where... Okay, here's what you want. Experimental Text Input Focus Manager. This one right here. By default, this is enabled. You want to set it to disabled when you open it up. It should now work for text input. So, um, hope these tips and tricks for Windows 10 on the Vivo Tab Note 8 are helpful to you. Um, kind of undecided if I'm going to leave Windows 10 on here. It's, it's. I mean, it's kind of nice. You've got some new features, some nice little things to play around with. Um, lots of updates are are hitting quickly. Um, but it, it definitely is not for the faint of heart. Um, so this has been Cameron on the Sea Butters channel. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and see more tech videos soon. Thank you.